Hi guys. It is a beautiful but windy Monday morning, November 25th, 2019, where we're heading to 84 degrees here in the heart of Texas. And uh, on Monday, November 25th, 84 degrees on this beautiful but windy day. And this is Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles and my little sidekick, Sancho Panza, doing what we do every day before I get out and enjoy this beautiful day. And that's bringing you today's Chronicle of the Collapse. And uh, I have mentioned this book, uh, which was written in 1980, called Overshoot by this fellow, William Catton, who unfortunately, William died a few years ago, but uh, I consider this book Overshoot. If you have not read this and you want to understand what people understood in 1980, what the 21st century was going to look at, look like, this is indispensable reading. Uh, it's a toss-up between Overshoot and Derek Jensen's uh, End Game. If I had to, it, it really is a toss-up between those books as the best books ever written about what is going on on this planet. So since <coughs> William Catton is no longer around to interview, maybe I can get this fellow Kurt Cobb who's also a great guy who gets it. Uh, maybe we can get Kurt Cobb on the show to talk about this. But what Kurt is doing in his essay, and I'm sorry, I cannot remember which one of our alert listeners sent this to me. I do appreciate you guys sending me all these links. Um, <clears throat> so Kurt Cobb's website is called Resource Insights. And this is actually, this essay's a uh, couple of years old, but since, since he's talking about a book written in 1980, <coughs> probably a lot more true today than it was a couple of years ago. Anyway, uh, in this essay, Kurt is telling us about William Catton's warning, meaning his 1980 warning to people probably 40 years in the future, perhaps. And since this is an excellent uh, introduction to this uh, book, I'm just going to sit here and I will put the link on here and encourage you to read this because it has a, a lot of other links. But this is what Kurt has to say about William Catton's warning. <clears throat> William Catton, Jr., author of the seminal volume about our human destiny, titled Overshoot, The Ecological Basis of Revolutionary Change. Catton believed that industrial civilization has sown the seeds of its own demise and that humanity's seeming dominance of the biosphere is only a prelude to decline. His work foreshadowed <coughs> later work such as Joseph Tainter's The Collapse of Complex Societies, which is also, uh, all of these are uh, required reading for collapsitarians. Don't forget Richard Heinberg's The Parties Over Oil, War, and Fate of Industrial Societies, and Jared Diamond's Collapse, How Societies Choose to Fail or Survive. <coughs> so I guess this is Kurt Cobb's reading list that we're going to center on uh, Overshoot. In Overshoot, Catton wrote, quote, <coughs> We must learn to relate personally to what may be called the ecological facts of life. We must see that those facts are affecting our, li our lives far more importantly and permanently than the events 
that make the headlines, close quote, written 39 years ago, every bit as true today as 39 years ago. <clears throat> he published those words in 1980, and now, especially now, it seems at least some of those facts have made their way into the headlines in the form of climate change, soil erosion, fisheries collapse, species extinction, contrained, constrained supplies of energy and other critical resources, and myriad other problems that are now all too obvious. But even today, few people see the world as Captain did. Few realize how serious these problems are and how their consequences are unfolding right before us. <clears throat> Few understand what Catton called, quote, the tragic story of human success. <coughs> tragic because that success, as it is currently defined, cannot be maintained and must necessarily unwind into decline owing to the laws of physics and the realities of biology. <clears throat> we can adjust to these realities or they will adjust us to them. Perhaps the single keenest insight Catton had is that humans have become de detritivores, I guess is how you would pronounce this, that humans have become detritivores, organisms that live off the dead remains of other organisms. By this, he meant the human dependence on fossil fuels, which are the ancient dead remains of organisms transformed into oil, natural gas, and coal. It is the fate of detritivore populations to expand and contract with their supply of detritus. He likened modern humans to algae feeding on the rich surplus of nutrients from dead organic matter swept into a pond by spring rains and often multiplying so fast as to cover the entire pond with a green carpet. By summer, with the rush of spring nutrients depleted, nutrients which are like the one-time infusion of fossil fuels into human society, the algae population crashes, leaving mostly open water and sometimes just an uneven ribbon along the edge of the pond. It is a boom-bust population cycle well known to biologists. <clears throat> In 1980, it seemed as if this cycle might be mitigated by wise policy and serious but achievable adjustments in the human way of life. <clears throat> By 2009, when Catton published his other book titled Bottleneck Humanity's Impending Impasse, which is also a great book I highly recommend, not quite the punch of uh, Overshoot, Catton felt that the time for major mitigation of the inevitable bust portion <coughs> of the population cycle had passed. So, why even write another book? Catton explained in the last paragraph of Bottleneck, quote, this was his closing to Bottleneck, written ten years ago, <coughs> I hope by the time my great-grandsons become great-grandfathers themselves, 
that their generation will be so conspicuously more enlightened than mine was, and our forebears were, that the world population of bottleneck survivors <clears throat> will have evolved social systems better able to be circumspect in the use of their planet and its vulnerable biosphere. If readers of this book come to share similar hopes and contribute to instilling them in their descendants, my reasons for writing will have been justifies, justified." Close quote. Yes, this is a humble ambition compared to the cautious hope that flowed from the overshoot in 1980, and it is important to note Catton's emphasis on social systems for he was trained as a sociologist. He believed that, despite our considerable technical prowess, our social system simply cannot contemplate making the drastic changes necessary to mitigate the downslope. Yes. <clears throat> Perhaps the most important thing to note about William Catton is that he did not blame anyone for the human predicament. To him, that predicament is the natural outcome of evolutionary processes and the powers given to humans through those processes. That predicament is no more a product of conscious thought and intention than is the beating of our own hearts. When I met and chatted with him for the one and only time in 2006, he was mildly jocular in the same way that his writing is, and he was upbeat in his attitude toward daily life, however disturbing. <coughs> the future may seem. That was probably the product of a life spent in deep and patient study of the world around him, a world that yielded <clears throat> oops, a world that yielded some of its most hidden and important secrets to him and he had the satisfaction of having published those secrets so they would not be secrets anymore. <coughs> Overshoot may stand as the central text of the 20th century about the ecological fate of humankind. The book represents a missed opportunity in that so few people were able to hear what Catton had to say in 1980, and so few want to hear it now, even as the headlines are filled with the very precursors of the bottleneck he laments in his last major piece of writing. And then uh, he goes from there uh, to his review of Bottleneck, but you can go on the link here and read his review of Bottleneck. So who is Kurt Cobb? Kurt Cobb is an author, speaker, and columnist focusing, focusing on energy and the environment. <clears throat> He is a regular contributor to the Energy Voices section of the Christian Science Monitor. Yep, he maintains a blog called Resource Insights. And uh, anyway, maybe we will hear from Kurt. But thank you, Kurt, for uh, reminding me and anybody else, particularly if, if you are new to this whole rabbit hole and you want to find one volume that just lays out 
what we talk about here at Collapse Chronicles. I cannot think of a better book than Overshoot, written 39 years ago. Uh, but I need to wrap up today's Chronicle of the Collapse and get out and enjoy this 84 degree. I'm going to go take a sun bath on November 25th. <clears throat> the yeppers. And uh, if you did enjoy this uh, video, please spend a few seconds to thumbs up and by all means subscribe. And we will be bringing you more pointers and more interviews about the single biggest story on the planet that nobody is talking about anymore, in my opinion, heading into 2020 than they were in 1980. Bye, guys.